Yo, 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 this is Michi Darko, and you tuned in to AU Dollars. They can't kill us all. Yo, what up, Cash Fam? My name is Matthew Craig, and you are locked into AU Dollars, Australia's Hip Hop Connect. We are independent grassroots hip hop platform and appreciate every single person who taps in with what we do. So please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good shit to this channel. Because as you know, we always bring you the biggest and best guests from Australia and around the world. And my guest today, damn, one of the most recognizable iconic voices in hip hop for over a decade now has accumulated a cult following as one third of the critically acclaimed trio Flatbush Zombies, that independent group. They got a resume that includes two top 10 Billboard charting albums and have worked with some of the biggest names in hip hop. I'm talking RZA, Action Bronson, Mac Miller, Joey Bada. Such is the respect for the craft of these MCs. This guy right here, he's known for his gritty, raw tone and brash lyrical content. There's no doubt who it is who's touched Mike when one of the verses from this cat comes on. After many, many years, we've finally been blessed with the, the Boo solo album, Gothic Luxury, out now. 13 tracks long with the features from the likes of Denzel Curry, Black Thought, Buster Rhymes, Freddie Gibbs, and more, all the way from Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York. It's survival of the fittest. He ate his twin in the womb, the one and only Michi Darko. Welcome to AU Dollars, my brother. Thank you. Hell of an introduction. Hell of an introduction. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Deserved, my guy, man. It's been like 10 years deep. I've been following Flatbush Zombies and yourself, man. What a journey to get to this point. How does it feel, bro? Feels good. Feels surreal, you know. Um, I always thought I'd make a solo project, but I never thought I'd make a solo project at the same yeah. time. So how long is it? How long has it sort of been in the back of your mind? And, and what were the steps, I guess, to, to getting towards it? Um, it's been in the back of my mind for a while because people always ask for it, but mm. I, I never like when it comes to art, things like music, I never like to force anything. Mm. It has to become organic. And when once COVID started, we had so much is isolation and we got off the road. Me, Eric, and Juice had time to ourselves, so mm -hmm. it kind of was, it made sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was just like divine intervention. The, the universe did it. I didn't really decide. Mm. The universe kind of decided for me. Mm, that's cool. Well, what's the the uh, the creative process been like different to obviously the trio stuff? How, how have you approached it differently as, as a solo album? Oh, you don't got your man to look next to you while you're writing a fucking song and saying, all right, now you got to do the second verse. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta write more lyrics. Um, you know, it's 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 strange because I don't really overthink any of the process when I make music with Eric and Juice, and I realize I don't overthink when I make music alone either. Mm. I, I just kind of let the music kind of speak to me. Uh, I had to build new relationships with new producers. Mm -hmm. I had to build a relationship with Dr. Genius. So, like, I have habits that they had to get accustomed to. Like, <laughs> I rap pretty loud. Yeah. And I tend to put a lot of layers and I stack a lot of vocals. And I had to learn, like, oh, this way he likes to do it his vocals. Like hearing it and then seeing it and seeing how I actually do it are two different things. So, you know, I have to get used to just doing that kind of shit and not, you know, not leaning on my brothers for mm. to finish a song. You know, it's mm. all about how I want to take it, what direction I want to take it. Mm. I like that. What's your writing process like, bro? Because well? you're like a Meech verse is there's there's layers to it. There's intelligence. There's a lot of research, obviously, then and thought that goes behind it. Are you someone who gets ideas during the day and then jots something down or or writes in the booth? What's your writing process like, bro? Um, I do a little bit of both. I actually watched some, it's something real interesting about Ghostface because he has one of the craziest like pockets and writing styles mm -hmm. to me. And he said he only writes when he's in the studio with the beat. I I get quotes. I might walk down the street and hear somebody say something clever and be like, oh, that's a hell of a quote. Would you shut up, dog? That's a hell of a quote. Um, I need to figure out how to morph that into something the way that I would say it. And mm -hmm. I take things from all over life. Like you might say something that's like, I've never heard this phrase before. That might be some local thing that you say, and then I'll end yeah. up using that into a line. So I take things from movies, music, people around me, books, everything. Yeah, yeah, for real, that's cool. And you mentioned there about you know, working with new producers, obviously a few producers on this. You got A-Track, work closely with Dot across the whole project. <laughs> uh, work closely with Dot. What was that relationship like, man? He's, he's, a, he's obviously the, the genius, a guy that's been around for a long time, an incredible catalog. What was that relationship like and, and building that? Honestly, that was like, um, <laughs> it was so simple. Like, all we had to do was really meet each other. I did a song for Denzel Curry and mm -hmm. um, Lost Souls. That was for his album originally. Yeah. And he FaceTimed Dot. Me and him just got to talking. And then I was like, yo, we got to link up, bro. And once we linked up, we realized how much shit we had in common. 
Mm-hmm. And I really, really fucked with him. I like his energy a lot. Um, and he's a man of intention and integrity. Those are things that are very, very important to me. Um, a lot of times people talk a good game and they, they're in the moment, but he he's mm-hmm. a man of his word. Um, so I just approached him and I played some of the music for him and he really liked it. And he liked the way I was going, which is like the early stage of where, where I was in the album making process. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yo, I'm, I'm here. Like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm mm-hmm. on board. And it just happened like that. And I'm really happy to do something like that with somebody like him too, because I feel like people need to hear what other kind of sounds he can create and what he's also capable of doing also. Mm, for real, for real. Talk to me about the concept of Gothic luxury, meaning behind it and, and where it sits for you. Originally, Gothic luxury was just like the tone, the mood that I made for the project. It was going to be called Cursed at one point. I had a few different names, um, but I'm big on etymology and the power of words and like to label uh, myself cursed. It was about to be, it was about to be about generational curses and mm. many different things, but to, to put that on myself, I was like, that's a lot. That's pretty powerful. <laughs> it's heavy. And Gothic luxury was the tone and the mood I made. And every time I mentioned people, mentioned to people when they were like, what do you want the album to sound like? What do you want it to feel like? What are you feeling? And I mentioned that they were like, why don't you just call the album that? And it kind of was, it made sense. And even when I Googled the terminology and look, no one's ever said it before. Mm. I put those words together really. And the meaning of it realistically is just, it's, it's, it's just finding like comfort in, in the darkness. Um, mm. that's essentially what it is. Uh, I made it like, a uh, uh, my friend asked me that question the other day. And then I said, let me ask you a question. If I had gasoline, right. And I'm going to light you on fire and you're going to die right now. Would you rather die in your dirty basketball shorts and one sock on? Or would you rather die in a nice, perfectly fit Tom Ford suit? Mm. And he said, yeah, I'd rather go up in flames in the Tom Ford. Mm. So that's kind of essentially what it is. It's about just finding finding, you know, comfort in the, in the most darkest times, which I feel like the last two years was for a lot of people. Mm. Yeah. It's been, been a pretty tumultuous time for any, anyone in the world and yourself personally, uh, condolences for the loss of your father. How's, how's the, um, the, the sure. mental state and the writing state been for this in, in the last two years? Because it's like, it's a pretty dense album. You, you touch on some real shit here and then, and about what you've been going through and a bit of a juxtaposition about what the world's been going through. Where was your headspace during that time? Oh, I was all over the place. I'm still grieving, you know, with my father's situation and then adapting to doing an album without your uh, partners that you've been doing an album with music mm-hmm. with your whole life, even before music. Um, yeah, it was no doubt in myself, but very much sometimes overanalyzing, if anything, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I, I kind of tried to stay on a... How do I say this? I can I can write and go so much different direction sometimes because I can touch so much different subject matters, I feel like. And I think that that's like a I'm a Swiss army knife. Mm. But sometimes you don't need all those tools. You just need mm. three of these blades to get away, yeah, like to get, get through the day. So, like, I had to just learn uh, which parts of myself should I display the most and what's the most important parts of myself to display on this album? Because um, sometimes people can't handle all 12 of your personalities. Like yeah. Only have- yeah. What's the, what's the, I guess, the message or, or the takeaway you want people to take from this album? Um, I want people to not necessarily take away from me and who I am, because mm-hmm. I can tell you who I am and, you, you know, you're still people, you're still going to ask or you're still either not going to believe or I can change in a day. So why does it really matter who I am? It's very, very second. For me, yeah. it's more about um, creativity and artistry and, and, being able to, if someone knew what I went through to finish this album and what I went through while I was trying to finish this album and start this album, um, I, I would hope that it would inspire people to know that you can create something in the midst of anything that could be going on in your life, um, no matter what's going on outside of your window or inside of your house or inside of your head, you know, uh, you can figure it out and do something that could probably stand the test of time or change your life or help other people or help you in the long run. Um, mm. That's the main thing with, with the whole thing. Cause it's not, it's not just about the body of work. It's about the time and what I was going through and who I was when I made the body of work. I think that gets overlooked too much with artists. We, we look at, oh, Illmatic, great album, but it's like, who was Nas when it happened? Mm. What was going on with him? What was his relationship like with his neighbor? What was it like with his block? What was his mental like? And I think all of that is very important. Mm. 
Yeah, very true, very true. And that's what one thing that's been consistent about your work and Flatbush Zombies over, over the last decade is you guys have always had social commentary on what you're doing, talking about what life's like in that point in time. And it's been a pretty tumultuous journey over 10 years. What's life like now, you know, 2022 for, for a black man in America dealing with with the issues you got to deal with? You, that's something you guys have commentated for a long time, but police brutality, politics, those sort of issues. Has it got worse? Has it got better? What's it like in 2022? Uh, I always say this joke to my friends is 2022 ain't the same as 1922. It's ain't much different from 1922. They ain't much different from 1822. Mm. As far as I'm concerned with history, when I look, if you ask my black ass again, the time machine, ain't much times in history is going to be good <laughs> for me pretty much. So you just got to take the good with the bad. Yeah, I can't really tell you if it's any worse because I might've been more ignorant to things mm. when I was, younger. you know, um, people always been begging for help. Wars always been going on. Yeah. I will say that we're at this weird time where some shit is right in front of your face and you know most of us are so blind and so or so focused on our personal goals that the world will be burning in front of us and we won't even notice until it gets to our doorstep yeah um for real. i think that's like the most that what i've noticed more than anything uh yeah shit, shit could be going to shits and we won't really realize until it's too late mm-hmm. uh yeah but that answers the question no, for sure. For sure it does. And one of the things I love about this project and, and the work that you guys have done for a while is every time there's a feature, it's intentional or a collab, it's intentional. It's always top tier lyricists and top tier rappers that you guys target. What's it like? Like Freddie Gibbs, Denzel Curry, some of the guys who got on this project. That was all very intentional, I feel, because they added a sonic and a thematic flavor. Um, yeah, I never. First of all, I really don't do music with people. If I don't, there's no cash grabs. There's no opportunity mm-hmm. clout. Like if I really don't respect this person, like this person's music, even I'll do music with somebody. I don't even necessarily think their music is the best, but I love them and like them. I'll do yeah. music with them. It's more about for me, the person, what they stand for, who they are. And the music is important as well. Mm-hmm. With these guys that you named, I have like a bucket list of just artists that I want to associate myself with so that when I'm gone, you can look and say I've rapped with some of the best, whether it be yep. from past, from the present, from the future whatever the case may be, that's very, very important to me. So, you know, getting somebody like Black Thought and getting somebody like Buster yeah. Rhymes, that's always, yeah. those always iconic. I knew it was a no brainer. You know, I always said to my manager, if I could, I put Jadakiss on every single album that I make, <laughs> if I could, you know, because these are people that I, like, I looked up to and, and look up to still, you know, and learn from every time I hear them rap and watch them and, and see, show people like hip hop, um, I, they're aging the way the rock stars age the way that yeah. people still look at motherfucking um rolling stones and have utmost respect for them and i feel like the generation before in hip-hop wasn't really getting that those guys mm-hmm. before didn't get that reverence so i love to see that kind of shit and for me like you know working with those people is just highly highly important mm. And well, I got a you, bucket list of way, way more. I have a lot more I got to work with, too. Well, we came. We came for real. Like, uh, what do you learn to, uh, about yourself across the journey, and particularly the journey of this album? Uh, know that I'm not afraid to say how I feel. And I never yeah. thought I really was. But yeah, in front of, like, new people and, and old people and everyone, I'm not really afraid to to uh, expose myself, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, to me, that's the best card you can play because no one, you can't really beat that. It's like, what? Like I'm being as real as possible. That's the realest you can get. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I learned, you know, how how much of that I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And I learned I got to pull back. And now I'm learning how much of that I do. I learned, you know, now I learn, okay, I need to pull back sometimes and not bear so much about myself because Sometimes it's good to have some mystery when it comes to certain type of things, uh, mm. if that makes any sense. Yeah, for sure. Also, I think the main the main thing I really learned is like I can get something done on my own. Like I never yeah. doubted myself yeah. before, but everything I've ever done was with the group and for purpose of with somebody else, or you know. So to get something actually done, I'm like, yo, you know, this is mine. You know, I never mm. never thought that was important. I don't. I still don't know if it is important. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you after. <laughs> You know, after a year and I listen to the album and I see if I if I love everything that I did and if it affected people the way I hope it affects people. Mm. How much of that that feeling or concept of authenticity and, and just being who you are is, is informed by by you know experimenting with psychedelics and, and ego death? I know I accessed flat bull zombies at a time when I was messing around with psychedelics and discovering a lot more about myself. How much of that was fueled by that? Um, it's funny with this 
I just talked about spirituality with someone early and I mentioned that, you know, a lot of the breakthroughs that I had on psychedelics, it wasn't that it was, I had a, the best analogy I can use is it's not like I was seeing in black and white my whole life. And then mm-hmm. I took psychedelics and I could see color. Mm-hmm. It was that I was seeing color. It's just after I took psychedelics, I was seeing colors that I didn't know existed. Mm-hmm. And I think that like, um, you can have those kind of breakthroughs through drugs. Mm-hmm. You can have those kind of breakthroughs through any kind of journey, to be honest, you know, meditation, you can find, I've seen people have breakthroughs from reading a damn book. You yeah. can find them through music. Um, and I feel like recently tra- trauma gives you breakthroughs also. And mm-hmm. recently through trauma, I, I, I went through a breakthrough. I went through traveled into parts of my mind and my emotions and my spirit that I haven't no- normally tap into, or that I would rather not tap into. Yeah. But when things really tragic happen to you, you either sometimes open up mm-hmm. or you just close in where nothing can come in. And I feel like I did a little bit of both yeah. during that. So instead of psychedelics being a breakthrough, life reality was my breakthrough a little bit more during this. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying psychedelia isn't reality. We all know it is. But this is more of just like harsh realities. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. tangible shit, see and feel. Hunted. That's real talk. That's real talk. What are your uh, your memories of Australia, bro? I remember about ten years ago, you guys came out and played a small vice party. It was like 150 people there, and that, that joint went off. And that was like that I was love, incredible. Night. I love Australia. Uh, outside of the fucking the the kangaroo burgers that I the demolished those kangaroo burgers. <laughs> um, yeah, it was beautiful. I love the city a lot. Uh, Sydney was fucking crazy. I think we went to Melbourne also. We went there again. A few years ago, we performed. I forgot where the hell we performed at, though. But it's always a good time. The crowds are always mad lit. You guys could drink like a motherfucker. <laughs> um, I like that a lot about you guys. Um, and the crowd is turned up. And it's so great traveling to, like, so, so far. And then we, we still speak the same language. Usually you mm. travel that far. It's like For everybody real. speaks a different language. So it's just cool to have those great experiences. I want to I want to experience it a little bit more. See the Gold Coast and all that type of shit. I still yeah. never got to that. Yeah, we're not going to come back. back vacation tip you know yeah spend some proper time here i get to see mm-hmm. the sides that's it what's the future look like now post album hopefully we're doing the north american tour the europe tour and then we get to australia somehow i get to down to asia you know get to japan and all that type of shit but um that's what's looking like a more music consistency on my end i'm gonna do my best to um to drop as much music as possible i'm not gonna just drop this and then disappear for five years yeah, nice. anything like that i have um we ready Little, little be known that I have a nice footprint in the second album already. So, you know, um, Let's go. I'm already working on, you know, two and thinking about what three should sound like and, mm. you know, just keep working. Got the bucket list of more people I need to work yes, with. Sir. There's people that I was supposed to be on the album that didn't get there. So, yeah. you know, I'm just trying to keep working, keep working. Yeah, we're going to get that Jada Kiss collab for real. Oh, of course. Yeah. All right, my bro, let's let's slide into the money minute now. I'm going to throw some fast questions at you and you hit me with the first answer that pops in your head, yeah? Yeah, let's do it. All right, the money minute now. We meet you, Darko. The world's ending tomorrow night. What's your last meal you have for dinner today? Kangaroo burger. <laughs> let's go. First ever celebrity crush. God damn. Mariah Carey. Mm, bad. Uh, when Michi Darko gets a big bag, where's his favorite place to spend money? eBay. <laughs> um... Dream holiday anywhere in the world. Where are you going? Back to Jamaica to claim my property and start building this home that I need to build for the future. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we've already touched on this, but again, dream collaboration. Any artist ever, dead or alive? Oh, God. Dead or alive. Michi Darko, Michi Darko Notorious, B.I.G. Big pun. Uh, One song. I feel it. I feel it. Favorite way to smoke weed? I love flour, mm-hmm. pronto leaf. Mm-hmm. Let's you go. Know, pronto leaf is, you know, the best. Uh, least favorite subject in school? School. <laughs> Just in general. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, least favorite subject in school was math. Mm. Movie recommendation. What's one movie everyone should watch? Holy shit. Shatters. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's on your rider backstage? Do rags. 
um, black T-shirt, towels, one Hershey's um, cookies and cream bar, water, black towels, by the way, um, blow dryer when I used to have dreads, um, condoms when I used to have sex. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing strange. Nothing yeah. strange. And last question we always ask on the Money Minute, a bit controversial, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No, no. That's not, not feel, pizza. Not feeling it. Michi Duck and rock with it. My brother, I appreciate your time today. Congratulations on the album and all the success coming, and we look forward to having you out in Australia again sometime soon. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I watch murder documentaries. 